Okay, we got a paper two question from uh, 2011, uh, May 2011 to uh, time zone two. Uh, uh, paper two, it's worth 20 points. Uh, you're supposed to answer this on separate paper. Uh, we're given the function here, 1.5x plus four plus six over x, and you'll see why x cannot equal to zero. All right, so you go to uh, your calculator and you want to put in uh, your function so that we can sketch it down here for question E when we get to it. Okay, and we want to look at it to help us answer the questions anyway. So uh, 1.5x plus 4 plus 6 over x, and you might want to use your fraction uh, uh, shortcut there to uh, avoid using brackets in the numerator and denominator. It's a nice little trick. All right, so we got our function there. Uh, write down the equation of the vertical asymptote. Again, uh, if we have zero in the denominator, I cannot divide by zero. So uh, that's why we don't have that in the domain. X cannot equal to zero. So that is in fact the vertical asymptote. And if you look at the graph, uh, Difficult to see on the TI-84, but there is a vertical asymptote uh, at x equals zero. The, the function doesn't compute. Um, we can look at the window size. I'm missing part of the graph here. And down here in E, when they ask for the sketch, they tell you that they want the window size to go for, for x has to go from negative 10 to positive 10, y has to go from negative 20 to positive 20. So you go to the window, and go in there and adjust that. Uh, the X values were good. The Y values, we didn't have a big enough window to see everything. So we got to go from negative 20 to positive 20 on Y to see everything. Okay, so go back to the graph again and you can see uh, this is what they want you to sketch in E. Okay, so back to the vertical asymptote. Why is there a vertical asymptote? We're dividing by zero there, it doesn't work. You can look at the table. And you can see that uh, x equals zero, there's an error. Definitely cannot have x equals zero. All right. Now, uh, we're going to find uh, the, the f prime of x later in chapter 20. And we're going to be able to find the gradient using the uh, derivative function. And uh, also be able to answer uh, where the function is increasing and de decreasing. Uh, again, um, that you can also see off the graph, but we're supposed to use uh, the derivative function to do that. Okay, there's our sketch. Now I wanted to talk about how do you find P1 and P2, the local maximum and the local minimum point of f of x, okay? So we're talking about the, the parent function, which we graphed, and we want to find the maximum point P1 and the minimum point P2. So the maximum point is here, the minimum point is here. They're only local, not because, again, this goes all the way up to positive infinity and down to negative infinity. So I want to go to a second trace. And again, we want to find a maximum first for P1. So again, uh, I'm looking for a maximum. Uh, the left bound is not at x equals 0. Remember, that doesn't compute. So I'm going to go to the left of the maximum here. You can watch my little cursor moving along the curve here. And I've gone to below the local maximum here, okay? So I'm going to hit enter. That's my left bound. Uh, now I'm going to scoot to the right with the cursor until I'm beyond the, the local maximum. I'm for sure be, got beyond the local maximum. And then uh, I hit enter again. And then for the third enter, I want to be close to the local maximum, but I'm close enough. It doesn't matter right now because there's only one local maximum, maximum in between those two points. Then I hit uh, enter again, and I get the coordinates for the maximum. Notice the coordinates are rounded. Okay, we're going to make it exact. X equals negative 2, Y equals negative 2. The answer to I, F, I down here. Okay, do the same procedure for uh, P2. Okay, finding the coordinates of P2. Second, trace. Now we're going to find a minimum for P2. Okay. And again, uh, the, the cursor is where I left it. I'm going to have to jump over 
to uh, the right half of the function past the vertical asymptote, and now I'm back to where the function uh, is, I'm able to calculate y again. Left bound above the minimum, right bound to the, to the right above the minimum, okay? All right, and then I hit uh, guess again. I want to get, I want to make sure that I'm close enough, but I, I, again, there's only one minimum in there. So now I have the coordinates of the minimum of the function, uh, two comma 10, okay? Sketch your, your graph, and uh, you're supposed to make some comments uh, about the range of the function here, okay? So uh, when we answer the question on the range, we have to look at our graph and understand that there's nothing happening here between these local minimum and maximum. So when you answer that question, uh, again, for this part, the left-hand part of the function, the range is from uh, negative uh, 2 down to uh, negative infinity, or you could just say y is less than negative 2. And then we have an or situation, y is greater than or equal to, should have said equal to here, greater than or equal to 10. So we have y is less than or equal to negative 2, or y is greater than or equal to 10, and you can see that on the answer key. End of video.